to CodeMonkey's Teacher's Video Guide to Getting Started with CodeMonkey. This guide will provide you with an overview on the different capabilities and actions available in your teacher account and for your students. We will explore the classroom dashboard, see how to add students, view their progress, and much more. Let's get started. From CodeMonkey.com, log in by clicking the Login button at the top of the screen. From here, enter your email and password, or click on the relevant single sign-on options if that is how you created your account. If you have not created a CodeMonkey account yet, click on Sign Up Now at the bottom of the page. Let's log in. Once logged into your teacher account, you will be taken to the My Classrooms page. This is where you will manage your classrooms and student accounts. We will get back to it later. In your upper right corner, click to access our language settings, My Account page, our privacy policy, our blog, or to sign out of your account. To the left is our main menu. Here you can navigate between My Classrooms, Courses, Teacher Resources, My Creations, Discover, and our Help Center at the bottom. Courses is where you will be able to access and complete the courses included in your subscription. This is also your student's main page once they log into their account, as well as where they will access the courses. You can complete any course that your students have access to. To begin, click on the image of the course you would like to play and click on Start Coding. These are the same steps your students will take once you've enrolled them in your classroom. When you see this button, that indicates that our narration option is available for you and for your students. Your students will be able to hear their code and challenge instructions out loud when clicking the button. This is great for students who are pre-readers, dyslexic, slow readers, or English language learners. To navigate within a course, click on the map icon located in the upper right corner of the screen. You can navigate using the single arrow along the side or using the double arrow at the top of the window. As a teacher, you are able to move back and forth and solve the more advanced challenges. Your students can only progress as they solve the challenges in their sequential order. Coding Adventure also has additional practice challenges available in skill mode. You can click here next to the Story Mode tab to access these challenges or access them from the courses page. Skill Mode challenges will help your students strengthen their understanding of the concepts they have learned. These challenges unlock as students progress in the game. Now that we've covered courses and navigation, let's go back to our homepage, which you can access by clicking on the CodeMonkey logo. Another way to get back to your homepage is by clicking on the menu icon on the upper right-hand side, then click Home. Next is Teacher Resources. Under Teaching with CodeMonkey, be sure to check out the popular Teaching with Coding Adventure course for teaching strategies and an in-depth look at concepts introduced in Coding Adventure Part 1. Our webinars page with access to past recordings and information on planned webinars and lesson plans for all of our CM courses. Teacher Resources also includes helpful how-to guides for video and text guides on the actions and features available as part of your CM account. Check our classroom resources for additional resources worth exploring. And last, your own cheat sheet for all the challenges solutions in one place. In the My Creations page, you will see all the games and challenges you have created using our Challenge Builder and Game Builder. In our Discover platform, you will be able to view games and challenges published by other students and teachers in the CodeMonkey community. All content is COPPA compliant and goes through moderation to make sure it is appropriate and that no personal information is shared. Your students will be able to access the My Creations and Discover pages from their homepage. Finally, be sure to check out the Help Center for advice and answers from the CodeMonkey team. Interested in seeing how your students see CM? Once they log into their account, they will see their classroom name to the right. To their left, they can access the courses page where they will access the courses, creations shared by their classmates, and creations shared by their teacher. My creations to see their own creations and access Discover. Let's get started on setting up classrooms. To set up and view your classrooms, click on My Classrooms. 
To create a classroom, click the Create New Classroom button. Then, name the classroom and select the subscription that you want to connect the classroom to. On the Classrooms page, you can see all of your CodeMonkey classrooms. The Student Seats box displays an overview of your subscriptions. By clicking on View All, you can view their details. The subscription's name, available content, number of available and used seats, the start and end date, and the subscription status. On the Actions column, you are able to edit the class name. You can archive a classroom. You would archive a classroom no longer in use to reorganize your classroom's list. Archiving a classroom will remove it from the list, and all students' progress and achievements remain. But students will not be able to access any of the courses available in the subscription. Archiving will not free up seats for users. Next is the Upgrade button. Upgrade is used to move a classroom from your trial to your purchase subscription, or from an expired subscription to an active subscription. To upgrade a classroom subscription, click on the Upgrade button and select the subscription you want to move the classroom to. Click on Upgrade, then click on Confirm Upgrade. Now, let's look at the reporting features available to you. Just below the list of classrooms, you have the option to generate a usage report for all your classrooms. Select a time range and click on Generate. In the report, you will see the number of classrooms, registered users, average time on site, and exercises solved. It also shows the monthly active users as well as a breakdown of usage per classroom. You are also able to pull a more detailed report by clicking on the Export All Data to CSV link and view the data in Excel or Google Sheets. The Search feature will allow you to search for a student. This will come in hand when you have a large number of classrooms. Let's take a look at a classroom's dashboard. To do so, click on one of your classrooms from the My Classrooms page. You will see the name of your classroom on top, as well as six tabs going across the page. Progress, Lessons, Students, Courses, Gradebook, and Showroom. Let's start with the Student tab. To add students, click on the Add Students button. You will see three options to add students. The first two will allow you to create accounts for your students. You can either create a single account or create multiple student accounts with one CSV file, which you can create using Excel or Google Sheets. You can also have students join your class by sharing your class code. Check out the how-to video from the teacher resources. Once the code is used, the student will be added to the class, or you can share your class sign-up page where students can join without entering the class code. Just copy this URL and share with your students. This is a great option for students who use our single sign-on options to sign up to CodeMonkey. Once students are in a classroom, you can edit their display and username, reset their passwords, archive them, move them between classrooms, or in certain cases, delete the student. Just above your classroom list, you will find the student's login cards. You can print these out for your students as they tend to forget their username or password. The Classroom URL is a great tool that allows students to access their CodeMonkey classroom. As the teacher, you can save the URL and share it with the class. This is very helpful for younger students as it shortens the number of steps needed to log in to CodeMonkey. Once accessing the URL, which can be embedded in a class website, the student would click on their username and types in their password. Did you know that you are able to add a colleague as a co-teacher? Co-teachers can be added on the Students tab. The co-teacher will have all the abilities that the teacher has over the classroom. Just type in their email address and click on Send Invitation to send them an email with an invite. Once they accept your invite, they will create their own CodeMonkey account, and the classroom will show in their My Classrooms page the next time they log in. The Courses tab is where you have the ability to assign or unassign any course purchased with your subscription. Before you start your class, visit this tab to make sure that the relevant courses are assigned. To assign a course, click on the Assign to Class button. Unassigning a course is as easy as clicking the gray Unassign button.
Next, we will visit the Progress tab. The Progress tab is often referred to as the teacher's best friend. It contains tracking abilities over your students' progress in the courses. I am now looking at my classroom's progress on Coding Adventure Part 1. To the left is the students list. For each student, you can see the percentage of the course they have completed. Here on top are the challenges numbers, and each star represents the student solution to that challenge. Most of our courses have a star scoring method. For each challenge, students can receive one, two, or three stars based on the quality of their solution. Here you see a breakdown of every student's score for every challenge played in Coding Adventure Part 1. Pink represents one star, blue represents two stars, and yellow represents three stars. You can read about our star scoring method in our Help Center. By clicking on a star, you can access the student solution to that challenge and view the number of times they attempted the challenge. By clicking on their attempt, you can view their solution and work through it with the class anonymously. Looking for the three stars perfect solution for a challenge? Just click on the challenge number. Challenge numbers with a yellow circle indicate an assessment challenge. Unlike the rest of the challenges, assessment challenges do not provide the students with any pre-built code. Instead, they will need to apply the specific learning concept that was taught in the challenges leading up to the assignment. If you are looking to limit your classroom's progress within the course, you can use our Limit Progress button. With this feature, you are able to limit your classroom's progress to a specific challenge number. Students who complete Challenge 20 will get a message that the rest of the challenges have been locked by the teacher. By returning to free play, students can progress at their own pace. The progress can also be limited by the last lesson taught. This is only relevant if you are using lessons for coding adventure. Super hints provide extra guidance for your students and enables them to progress independently as they go through the coding adventure challenges. This feature can be toggled on or off by the teacher from the Progress tab. By default, it will be turned off. Super hints can either be a very helpful tip or even the solution to a challenge. Now let's look at the Lessons tab. If you are teaching the Coding Adventure course, you can choose to use this feature, which will allow you to easily conduct your lesson according to our lesson plan structure. Here you can access the course's individual lesson plans. Just click on the lesson number to get the lesson structure and begin your lesson. Click here to download the lesson plan file for this lesson to review before starting the class. When you click on Begin Lesson, student accounts are placed in lesson mode, which means they will not be able to access any content. You can then follow the lesson structure as it is displayed for you. Once you assign challenges, the student accounts go into playtime, which means they can only play the challenges which you have assigned. Lesson mode can be used to prevent students from going too far ahead or being distracted by other courses. Lesson mode also saves your place. When you end a lesson, it is marked as complete and the lesson number turns to green. You can learn more about lessons through this short tutorial. Now, let's explore the Gradebook tab. From this tab, you can view students' grades for each concept in each course. Grades can be displayed in numbers, letters, or percentages. You can also calculate the grade from a certain subject or the overall grade. This data can then be exported to a CSV and easily viewed in Excel or Google Sheets by using the Export button. The bottom of the Gradebook tab displays statistics for your classroom. Challenges by Difficulty is a visual guide to show which challenges were the most difficult for your classroom. Challenges that your students found most difficult would be in the larger circles. Last is the Showroom tab. If your classroom students are using the Challenge Builder or Game Builder to create their own creations, these will be displayed here, but only if the student has chosen to share their creation with the classroom. You can sort the list by name, most recent, or oldest submission. Remember the Discover community displaying shared creations? Here you can choose to disable it for your classroom if you don't want them wandering around instead of doing their homework. We have explored the different available actions and features available for you as part of your CodeMonkey teacher account. We hope that you feel confident to start using CodeMonkey. 
you can visit our Help Center anytime, located here at the bottom, or contact us through the main menu, or email us at support at codemonkey.com. Thank you for watching, and as always, don't forget to write code. Catch bananas, save the world.